Okay, a good dog sits. We have this cultural bias, cultural fog, whatever you like to call it, the lens through which you process and filter information. One of the things that we have is that a good dog sits, okay? And this can get in the way and very often does get in the way of training the dog to do what we want them to do because we've got that in this, mind, this mindset that a good dog sits. So to give you an example of that, say we're doing a recall lesson and what we're looking to do is get the dog running back towards us. As the dog runs back towards us, he's doing the behavior that we like. I will say to the client, tell him he's good and cut, you know, tell him he's good for doing that. So we've marked the behavior. Put your hand towards your reinforcement, whether it's the tug toy, the ball or the food. And as he comes in, start feeding him or start playing with him. And very often, novice clients who are working with me, the dog will run back and they'll bring out the food and they'll hold it and they'll always say sit to the dog. Okay, because we've got this idea that a good dog sits and you only get your treats if you're a good dog. Okay, so what the dog has now done is run back towards us and we ask for more work before we give the dog a treat. And that's based on traditional dog training classes of getting your dog to sit all the time. Okay. I've not done this experiment, but just imagine it, okay? So we've got 10 people who are, um, have had dogs or have been around dogs most of their lives, right? And I give each of them one treat each. And I say, I'm gonna bring my dog in, and the instructions are, give my dog a treat, okay? How many of them do you think will ask the dog to sit before they give, the, give a treat? So what I've get done is give them fairly specific instructions, give her a treat. And what they hear is something else. So you only get a treat if you're a good dog, and you're, you're a good dog if you're sitting. So you'll not get the treat unless you're a good dog. So they'll come up and they'll ask her to sit, and she sits and gets a treat, okay? The guy with a remote control car next door, which is what the buzzing is. Okay, so we've got this idea that we need to get our dog to sit before they do everything. Sit before we go out the house, sit at crossing the road, and sitting is a passive, stationary, relaxed behavior for dogs. It's not active. It can be taught to be active, but it's generally not if we let them do their own thing. So imagine I'm, we go out for a walk and I take a deck chair and every single time we stop at a junction or a curb or at a road, I open the deck chair, put it down and ask you to sit down and relax in it. And upon doing that, and I ask you to get back up and move, that's what we do when we ask our dog to sit at the curb. That's not me saying let your dog forge out, we can get her or him to stand next to us at the curb, okay? But try and think of not having this mindset of getting your dog to sit all the time for everything that they do. The cultural fog that we talked about, Susan Friedman talks about it a lot and we'll present, we're getting her in July uh, for a two-day seminar, 8th and 9th of July in Glasgow, okay? And uh, she'll discuss more of this about cultural fog when we're doing this, okay? So, uh, questions or comments below, guys? And, uh, and we can have a chat about it, uh, and thanks for watching.